Welcome to this Killick Explains Finance video. This week, the rule of 72, or how small sums can make a big difference. Now, remember, something I've covered before in other videos, the awesome power of compounding. You have a friend when it comes to long-term investing. You don't have many, but you do have one. It's called compounding, and supposedly, Albert Einstein, no less, called it the eighth wonder of the world. It's the ability to make money on money, and it's at the heart of what I'm about to say next. Now, the rule of 72 is a really convenient back of an envelope shortcut to explain how fast you're going to double your money without lots of complex maths. It was dreamed up by somebody who probably should have gone out more often, but it's very useful. All right? And it basically says, if you want to know the answer to the question, how long will it take me to double my money at a given annual growth rate, it gives you the answer without having to go to a spreadsheet or use a complex calculator or use any mathematical formulae. So it's pretty handy. So in other words, if you divide 72, hence rule of 72, by the growth rate you've got in mind, you get an approximate estimate of how long it'll take you to double your money. Pretty neat. So how does that work? Let's have a quick look. Now, it works really well in a certain range of interest rates in terms of accuracy. Between about 5 and about 12% is a really handy rule of thumb, and it can be adjusted for numbers outside that range, but I'll leave that beyond the scope of this current video. So let's look at three rates where it's going to work quite well. 10%, 8%, 6%. These are not guaranteed, just as illustrations. Now, how long will it take me to double my money? That takes a bit of fiddling around with a calculator or a proper spreadsheet or a proper formula. But rule of 72 just says, divide 72 by that number and you get about seven years. There's your answer. At 8%, 72 divided by eight is around nine years. This is to double your money, remember. 72 divided by six, this is the power of compounding, earning 6% on 6% on 6% each year. And it would take about 12 years to double the original sum. So that's pretty neat. Now, how accurate is it? Well, just to demonstrate that, I've done a quick proper calculation, if you like, using a proper compounding calculator. And what you find is, if you apply 6% as a rate to an original sum of 100 pounds, so after one year, you've got 100 pounds plus six pounds, then you take the 106 and add 6% on top to give you 112, then you take the 112 and add 6% on top and so on, you get to the point where you've doubled your money, after around 12 years, 201 pounds, not exactly 200 pounds, but near enough. So there's your rule of 72 kind of demonstrated to work, if you like. At a rate of 8%, I suggest on the previous slide, it would take around nine years using the rule of 72 and exactly pretty much bang on there, 200 pounds is the answer you get out of a compounding calculator with a bit of rounding. And at 10%, well, not quite as accurate, but after seven years, you get to a figure of around 100 and 95 pounds. So the true answer is more like you know, 7.2 years. You get the idea. As a back of an envelope way of calculating how long it'll take to double your money, pretty handy. Now then, you can reverse it. You can also say, all right, if I assume a certain inflation rate, how long will it take to halve my money at those inflation rates? Well, at an inflation rate of 10%, and we have had that in the UK in the past, albeit not now, the rule of 72 says about seven years. Same principle, 72 divided by the number gives you the answer. At 8%, about nine years. And at 6%, about 12 years. So it can be turned on its head and used like that. And that's interesting for investors when you look at what I've called before the problem with cash. And the problem with cash is that in real terms, it is basically eroding your ability to buy stuff. And some of you will have seen this chart before. If we go back to the early 70s, all right, and look at the purchasing, purchasing power of 100 pounds. Well, it didn't take long to halve that when inflation was much higher than it is now. It only took a handful of years. Rule of 72 would have told you how long. And now you're right down to more like sort of six or seven pounds worth of purchasing power. Pretty bad news. So let's turn this on its head and look at something more positive. And it's basically this. We should all be saving more. And if we're not going to save in cash, where do we want to be saving? Well, somewhere else. So how are we going to save more, first of all, and then where are we going to save it? Well, here are some suggestions. If I look around my life at the moment, I know, hand on heart, there are ways I can save money on travel, and every little bit helps. I could be clever all the way I use my Oyster card, for example. I can save money on things like my pay for TV channels. I can save money on bills if I shop around a bit more regularly, a bit more often. And I can even shave a bit off my mortgage. And let's say 
I sit down and actually do that one day and come up with the idea that I could save fairly easily, hardly without, you know, without noticing an extra 50 pounds a month. What am I gonna do with it? Probably getting the idea of this, not put it in cash. What I'm gonna do is invest it in something where my purchasing power won't be eroded, hopefully, like shares. Now let's run a few scenarios just to finish off. So imagine, imagine I could earn 2% over 25 years. That's a pretty conservative estimate. Remember, it's 50 pounds a month I'm saving. At the end of 25 years, that's a fairly tidy sum of 20,000 pounds. 20,000 pounds is a meaningful sum, and I've got it by just squirreling away an extra 50 pounds, and I hardly noticed where I had to cut costs in order to get that 50 pounds. The 2% isn't very exciting. Imagine I could earn 5% instead. Not guaranteed, but imagine I could do that. That's the UK's sort of long-term return from shares over the last 50 years, so it's achievable, it's out there. Suddenly, I've saved 30,000 pounds just for tucking 50 pounds away every month. And if, to be a little bit aggressive about it, if I could get 8%, not crazy, if I could get 8%, then suddenly my 50 pounds a month becomes 48,000 pounds over 25 years. So there you can see how small amounts can make eventually a big difference if you let compounding work for you. Lots covered there. If you'd like to know more about the Rule of 72, when it works, when it doesn't, or anything else that I've mentioned in this video, please email me to the usual place.